This is Walter Leite, and in this video, I will show you how to perform one-to-one -one greedy matching based on the propensity score. So this type of propensity score matching is the, uh, explained in chapter five of my book, Practical Propensity Score Methods using R. Um, now, the, the example that I will run here is to estimate the effect of mothers having a job that provides or subsidized child care on the length that they breastfeed their children in months. And it uses data from the National Longitudinal Survey of Earth, 1979, which is the data about the mothers, combined with the uh, NLSY79 children in Earth, um, where the children data were obtained. Now, uh, for this example, the propensity scores were estimated with logistic regression and they are already in a file. So first I'm going to load the data set, which contains um, the covariates, the outcome, and the, the treatment variable. And I also have, as part of the data file, a vector of covariate names, a vector of names of uh, BC data indicators to indicate which uh, values each variable had BC data, and the propensity score formula that was used to estimate propensity scores. Now, I will implement one to one greedy matching um, with replacement and using a caliper of 0.25 standard deviations. And I will use the match sheet package to do that. So next step is to load the match it package and within match it, the, the function match it um, will be used. So in this code here, I'm implementing the greedy matching. Um, as arguments for the match it function, I have the formula, which is the propensity score formula. Now match it is able to estimate propensity scores from this formula. Uh, however, I'm not actually doing that. I am providing propensity scores previously estimated. So here in this argument distance, I provide the propensity scores. If instead of providing distance, if I said distance equals logistic, it would estimate the propensity scores for me with logistic regression. I like to provide the propensity scores, which gives me more flexibility. So for example, if I could, could have used any data mining algorithm to estimate propensity scores. Uh, I could use methods that are not available in that sheet. Um, now, here I provide the data, and this is specifies which matching method. So nearest stands for nearest neighbor, which is a type of greedy matching. Uh, ratio of one means I'm doing one-to-one -one matching, also known as pair matching. Replace equals true. So it's matching with replacement, which is better than matching without replacement because it's always looking for the best matches. Um, and um, in, now matching with replacement because um, a control individual may be used as a match for multiple treated. This means that this will result in weights um, because let's say if, um, matched observation is used more than once, it's used twice, it will have a weight of 0.5. Um, and then a, a caliper implements a restriction here of maximum distance where the matches are allowed. So here 0.25 standard deviations. This also helps me enforce common support. So any tweeted observation that does not have any control observation within 0.25 standard deviations of the propensity score will be dropped. Now, so I'll run the matching. Really matching is really computationally fast. Okay, and then the match it package has a nice um, summary function for covariate balance. So we'll just run a summary on the greedy matching object standardized equals two to get standardized uh, differences to evaluate covert balance. Okay, so here I obtain multiple tables. The one that I'm 
most interesting is a summary of balance for match data. It also provides the original balance. Now, the gives me means, means of the treated group, means of control group, standards of control, standards mean differences, um, which are here obtained as the, the, the difference between the means of treatment, means and control divided by some deviation of the control. And, and if I'm going with the what works clearinghouse standards, I want the ideally, um, so that's mean difference less than 0 0.05, but the uh, standards also accept standardized mean difference is less than 0.25, as long as I also include those variables that are between 0 0.05 and 0 0.25 in my outcome model. So here I can see that I have some that are less than 0 0.05, my most are above 0 0.05, and then, but they are um, less than 0 0.25, which is, is good news, okay? Um, then gives me the percent balance improvement as compared with without matching. Now, so we have satisfied with covert balance uh, using the 0.25 criterion. Um, now, if I wanted to obtain a summary, I could do a summary just of the standardized mean differences, gives me the minimum and the maximum here, which was 0.1. Nine, which is less than 0.25. Now there is another criterion that's commonly used, particularly in medicine, it's by Austin, 0.1 standard deviations. If I want to use that criterion, um, then I have 11 variables that exceed 0.1 standard deviations. Okay, now, um, now after I examine the map, the, the quality of matching with uh, an evaluation of covariant balance, the next step is to estimate the treatment effect. So here I'm estimating the ATT average treatment effect on the treated. Um, I will first extract the, the match data set, which will only contain treated groups and matched cases. Um, I use the match data function for that. So I, I have here, the data greedy matching, which the original data had 1,209 observations, the data greedy matching only has 210 observations. And I will um, estimate the average treatment effect. Um, also taking into account the weights, because um, remember I, I estimated, I matched with Replacement, therefore I have weights. If I look at here, data greedy matching. At the end of the file, um, I will have, you know, my covariates here. Um, it was were used to evaluate covariate balance. And I can get the variable names. Oh, if I type names, names, with uh, greedy matching. You can see here that at the end of the data set, I have the weights which are used in the analysis if I do um, table, table, data, greedy matching, weights. You can see that they, I have a few weights. These weights were normalized so that they sum to the sample size. Okay, now um, to estimate the ATT, I use the weighted regression with the survey package. So first I load the survey package, then I create a survey design, which is just a way to declare what your weight is and what your data is. 
So using the SVY design function, IDs is cluster IDs. I don't have clusters here. Uh, weights are my weights that reflect the this um, the matching with replacement. And this is my data, data grid matching. So I'll create survey design. And then um, to estimate the ATT using weighted regression, I do SVY GLM. This is my outcome, which is uh, weeks of rest feeding. This is the treatment, child care. Now, this is a very simple model. If I wanted to control for covariance, I could add additional covariance here. Um, my survey design, and I'm running it, you know, using a uh, Gaussian distribution here for my um, model. So I um, run these and get a summary. And here I have the estimate of the average treatment effect of the treated of child care which here happens to be not statistically significant. So that's how you perform one-to-one -one greedy matching of the propensity score.